And real quick before we start the video, um, we have a, another YouTube channel. It's called Udropreneur. And we work very hard to put good content out for you. It's a little bit different than our, than our Guardian Safe a Lot channel. It, it's more business oriented, behind the scenes kind of things. Um, also has a history of our company in there too. We have three videos on that. We'd appreciate it if you would uh, check our YouTube channel out. It's Udropreneur. I'll have uh, Randall put a link up here to the channel. And uh, hopefully enjoy that content. And please subscribe to our channel. Thanks. Okay guys, so we are, today I have uh, Lucas with me and uh, we're gonna go uh, go do some jobs today. I gotta pick up the slack. We have uh, one of our guys out with COVID and uh, we've got other guys, another two men, uh, guys out of town doing jobs. We're just trying to put out all these fires. We have a lot of big projects. We're really over, overbooked almost. So um, I'm jumping in the service vehicle to help out. So me and Lucas are gonna go, we're gonna go do a rekey real quick at a, uh, just a little a business property here I believe in town. And then uh, after that, we're going to go to a, a Cypress Creek ER or something like that to, to uh, rekey some locks or fix something. So we'll uh, take you along with us today and uh, show you what we what we get into. All right, so we uh, we just arrived at the uh, job site. We're going to basically um, I think we have like eight or nine doors we need to master rekey. We came out last time and and started the master key system, but now we're going to um, build off it, keep an additional eight doors, make some additional keys and uh, swap some hardware around and that'll be it and then we'll be out of here and we'll be on to the next job. So uh, we'll uh, keep you updated. Alright so uh, I'm just making a couple keys right now with this uh, blue punch machine uh, for the uh, job that we're on right now. Uh, we're basically master keying um, all their doors, the remainder of their doors so that they could uh, have everything working the way they want. They want HR keys separately, they want IT rooms separately, front doors, exterior doors, internal doors, different. So we created a system, we're keying everything up, uh, cutting most of the keys at the original, uh, the blue punch. It's a little easier, especially when you're doing multiple keys and things. I like to cut the originals on the blue punch so that if you start with a good foundation, then everything goes good off that. If you take a, you know, a, just a random key cut and start going and make copies of it and stuff, there's going to be little variations in there that make it harder later on when it comes to master rekeying things. I've actually had some of that issues going on right now, but but uh, we're fixing them. So I'm cutting everything with the uh, the blue punch, stamping all the keys. Uh, like I said, we got about eight or nine cylinders. We're putting in, rekeying, and sw swapping some hardware, and then we'll be on to the next one. So I'm doing just stamping some of the keys right now before I turn them in. Let's see. Uh, we like to use the. Uh, stamp sets that come that are in the trade more than the uh, stamp sets you can get at like Harbor Freight or something like that. The ones you get at Harbor Freight, the metal stamps you get at Harbor Freight, they wear out after maybe you know, less than maybe 100 uses or so and they start to get really fatigued and then the letters stop showing up so um, we use, we use uh, the higher quality ones that come in a uh, box like this. You can get them at any of your uh, locksmith supply shops. Those will last forever, literally forever. We hardly ever have, I don't think we've ever had any set where they've just wore out. Um, so if, you're, if you are looking for a stamp set like this, the ones you get at Harbor Freight in a little red case, uh, you pay for what you get. So uh, I wouldn't uh, recommend using those because you will have to replace them fairly soon at some point. So we're getting moving along here. I uh, just cut almost all the keys. Lucas is putting in the remainder of the, or take, putting the remainder of the locks uh, in that we've rekeyed. And then we're about to pack up and then uh, head on to the next one. All right, so we finished up the uh, first job. Uh, it was like nine master rekeyed cylinders. I made like 20 something key, 25 keys, stamped them all, uh, swapped some levers around, got that all done. Now me and Lucas are gonna head on to, um, heading on to like an animal ER clinic. And I believe we're just gonna rekey re some locks. There may be some additional work there, but we'll find out, I guess, when we get there. Uh, so we'll keep you updated. All right, so we stopped by the animal uh, ER clinic and they had a panic bar in the back door uh, that when they would push the panic bar really hard, it would unlock the outside lever trim that engages with the panic bar. So I've never actually seen that happen, but there must've been some part broken in there. So any, I tried it, I pushed the panic bar really hard and what do you know, it unlocks the outside door. So 
um, they were missing three different main parts of the, of the panic bar too. They were missing the head cap, the actual cover part on the end, and the end cap. So it's been beat up and abused. So um, anyway, uh, we, we basically uh, gave them two options on different hardware replacement, either, either putting in a, a Dexter grade two panic bar and uh, trim, lever trim, or uh, we could put in a Marks. Uh, 9900 panty bar stainless steel with the uh, exterior uh, lever trim uh, and the reason why I do that is one's a cost-efficient option and one's a little bit more expensive but with all marks hardware you get lifetime replacement so I sell the, the heck out of those uh, marks bars man and if you can give a customer a lifetime free replacement on mechanical warranty on those things that's fantastic so um, that's what we uh, we offered them so they're gonna make up their mind which one they want we're gonna order it today and we should have it tomorrow and come out and put it in tomorrow so as of right now, we're on our way to another house. We're gonna do uh, a couple fresh installs on some deadbolts, and uh, I guess we'll show you some of the progress as we uh, we get it done. Thanks. All right, so we're uh, <clears throat> the last job ended up not happening. I'll explain what happened. So we got there. They wanted us to put some hardware in. Talked about uh, talked to her about beefing up some of her security. Uh, ended up upselling the customer on getting her to do a couple strike boxes to reinforce her doors and uh, she wants to put in some double cylinder deadbolts and things like that so we actually created more sales which created more time it was going to take and she was willing to move it to Monday so we're going to move that that job to Monday but that's a lot of what we do here at Guardian Safety Mock is we don't just go out to do the job they want we go out with the intent to say hey we offer all these other services we can do all these additional things for you that help you and we don't push them on the customer we just offer it to the customer and make it known that we can do additional things for them and most people are happy to know that they can do additional things to protect their property and family so that's one thing we really do at Guardian Safe and Lock. We make sure we get we take care of the customer, not just what they ask for, because a lot of them don't even know what we do or even know what's out there to increase their security. So it's our job to go out as a professional and say, hey, you have this. This is that security risk. You could do this to counter it. If you want to increase your security, you have children, you could do this or this or that. So we're going to go back out Monday and do that job. So we just drove uh, uh, out here to Hockley now, which is 25 minute drive. We're just about to pull into another property right now and we're going to actually diagnose, see what's going on with his uh, safe dial. It looks like the, he has a, uh, a dial that's malfunctioning possibly and we may need to diagnose it, repair it, or possibly replace it. So uh, we'll see if we can get some video, video footage um, of it and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so uh, we have permission to record here on site at the customer's house, like always. Um, <clears throat> so what we're gonna be doing, you notice here the, uh, the safe keypad, this happens all the time. The battery terminals, if pulled incorrectly, will, you know, will break off. So uh, sometimes we're able to repair it if it's a wire tear. If it's not, then sometimes we have to uh, completely replace the uh, the keypad, which in this case is that's what we're going to have to do. So um, we're going to go ahead and pull off the old keypad, pull off the interior of the door, remove the lock pack, <clears throat> and then reinstall a new keypad, program it for the customer, and then we're on our way. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're just going to remove the inside of this... Uh, safe door the panel on the safe door here so that we can get to the uh, lock pack behind it and replace it so I'm having uh, Lucas do this for training purposes even though he's done it before but he's gonna go ahead and take off all these screws that have caps on them he took all the caps off first and then he's gonna take the screws out and then once he gets the uh, <clears throat> that all off we'll lift this piece it's usually a piece of sheetrock so we'll lift this off and then it'll give us access to the uh, lock pack behind it. And then we're going to swap it out with a, um, what do you call it, a uh, Lagarde Basic 2 electronic keypad. Okay, so we think you got all the screws out there? Oh, just the last one. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm going to put my foot up underneath right there. You're good. These inside panels can be a little heavy, so I usually put my foot up under the bottom like that just to keep it from falling down once the last screw's out. There you go now. Okay, actually put it in front of the safe stuff, that way I don't have to block it. <laughs> there you go. Alright, so this is an electronic lock pack, and why is it telling me I'm not level? Here we go. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is remove this plate, which is holding the relocker on, take that off, and then the, the lock pack off itself, and detach the cable, 
and then we'll re -put, reinstall the new keypad. Right now. And just pay attention to uh, what hole it's coming out of, that way it makes it a little easier for you. Go ahead and remove everything. The lock pack. It's a Allen There's piece. Not, huh? It's Allen keys. Allen wrench? Really? Mm -hmm. Alright, well, let's go get an Allen wrench. Alright, grab that lock pack. Alright, out the old. About to be in with the new. Yeah, so that's not going to need. You, got, you are going to need the relocker plate and stuff too, but go ahead and. So here's the one we're going to install. I'm going to hold this open for a second. Take that off there. Yeah. So this is a Lagarde Basic 2 keypad, you know, standard, uh, standard, good quality uh, keypad that we use. This is kind of our go-to, just basic keypad, hence Lagarde Basic. But uh, and here's the lock pack, and then there's the battery. So we're going to install this Lagarde Basic 2 on the uh, on this uh, door to replace the uh, S and G keypad that was on here. So first things first, we're going to want to get this uh, lock pack or the outside cover plate mounted to it. All right, so we got the uh, S and G keypad on the front, and then we mounted it. Put the two posts on there, mounted it, and now we're just gonna attach the uh, cable to the lock pack. Before you do that, real quick, before we put that on, just to make sure we have the right right wiring, I'm gonna do the default code real quick, see if it works. Oh, battery! Uh, there is a battery here. Put it into the other wire. Oh, no, no, you gotta like push that thing back and then push it back or forward one to help you get it out. There you go. Yeah, see if it works now for a second. Give me one second. I don't remember. Yeah. Can move? Perfect. Okay, we're good. Yeah, so there you go. Right? Yeah, now look at here. And you also have that groove in the back where the wire needs to sit into because there is going to be where it kind of comes out. Here, hold on. The wire is gonna hang up like that. Yeah, I'm just saying, put it there in that groove. So, you know what I mean? You got you. And you're gonna have to mount the relocker plate to it also. Where's that relocker plate? Before we do anything? Down there. So that way the screws don't roll up. Alright. Relocker plate back on. Relocker is uh, basically a plate that holds that spring loaded pin right there, that pin right there, spring loaded pin in place so that if someone rips off the keypad outside and sticks a screwdriver down the middle of the hole and starts hammering it to knock this lock body off right here, um, then it would knock that plate off, which in turn would let that pin fall right into the railing system. Uh, so it's kind of like a, a backup feature in case someone's trying to break in. Uh, Not those. You know. No, the screws right here. Come with it. Try this. In there. Mm -hmm. I think it's those tiny screws that are. Alright, see if you can use theirs then. Yeah. Sometimes you have to use the old screws. And... Yeah, that should do it. Maybe it won't reach, huh? No. Okay. Alright, so we figured out how we're going to mount this uh, relocker plate on there. So he's got the one two three screws to mount and then we're going to take these two screws out and mount the relocker plate to it that way because you always want to make sure you put the relocker plate back on otherwise you're reducing the security of the safe
Let me see being a good little hole. There we go. Down really good. I just want to make sure that relocker is way clear of what it needs to be, which it is. So that's a good thing. All right, so that's installed correctly. Now I could uh, test it before doing everything. So go ahead and uh, go on the other side of the door there, sir. All right, you entered the code, and I'm going to see if the latch well, retracts. Very well. Me or my, I couldn't get enough finger on that. Go and do it again and retract the pull the bolts back. Pull it back. Pull it back. There you go. Okay, yeah, it's just like the, the railing stuff's a little stiff. Uh, lock it back into place. Try it one more time. There needs to be some, I need some lithium grease or something in here. Okay. We'll go ahead and put some lithium grease and I'll recommend servicing this while we're at it. Okay, on to the next step. Okay, so right here, this is our uh, WD-40 Specialist Protective White Lithium Grease. This is what we use on, on safes, um, safe parts. Anyways, you don't want to use any other stuff. This is what you, this is what we, the industry standard and what they use for uh, servicing uh, safes. So let's go ahead and go back in there and apply some. Keep the camera down, I don't want to show too much. Alright, back at the safe here. Oops, sorry. Maybe this one take it Hold it, Corey. Okay, so I'm just going to apply some right here. You don't need to soak down anything, you just make sure you hit the uh, the areas that slide. That's fine, that's not gonna slide back and forth. There's not a whole lot in this one. This is a pretty simple setup inside of here. Um, so I don't think we need to do much more. There, maybe a little on the head of the bolts. Just, it's outside in this Texas weather. It gets a little uh, humid out here, I would say. Usually, 85 and above humidity, so um, it causes a lot of rust issues inside of a thing. So that's why we use this this lithium grease. So that should help it out. Switch sides over there. Let me try it. See if it works smoother. Yeah, I could use some on the outside of here too. Hold on a second. Let me spray some behind the neck of this because it's a little. There we go. Let me try it again. Let's watch the rail. Is it moving right now? Moves a little bit. we do also we don't just like I said we don't just come out and do exactly what we were here to do if we see additional issues like that's a little rough to turn then hey let's service the safe for her. at least uh, make the mention that we can do that for her and see if they want us to do it um, we never just settle for what we come out for if we notice other additional issues or things that could come up as a possible problem in the future then it's our job to bring that up while we're out here so um, I think we're good now what we're gonna do is put the cover back on the inside of the safe I'll have Lucas put that back on and then I'm gonna get the customer to come over here and we're gonna set her combination and we won't record that part.
Okay, so combination keypads on, it works. We lubricated the uh, the railing and the bolts, and Lucas is, I think, just popping the caps on over the uh, over the screws he put back on. So after that, we'll test it one more time. We like to test it at least three times with the door open. That way we can make sure before we close this thing, because once you close it, if you don't have the right code, then then you're in trouble. All right, so we uh, we are uh, back on the road now. We finished up with the uh, safe uh, swap out. We had a defective uh, electronic keypad. Well, it wasn't defective. She really she broke it. She was trying to replace the battery, and she ripped it out of the board and and the connector itself off the battery uh, where it snaps in. So. Uh, so the only thing we can do at that point was replace the uh, device. Uh, sometimes if they break it in the middle of the wire, we're able to just uh, you know patch the wire together and then and, and get her fixed. But in this case, we had to replace the whole unit. So we swapped it out for her. We're wrapping it up now. It's literally just now a little after 5 o'clock. So it's been a long day, and uh, we're going to wrap it up and call it a day. So thanks for tuning in uh, to another episode of Leading From The Front. And, uh, we appreciate the support. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't, and please hit the bell icon for notifications. Don't forget to follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or on all the social media platforms. We appreciate the support as always.